It's January, and in Canada, the nights are long and cold. We need to set up a shelter, gather some firewood, and try to stay warm with just two wool blankets and some tarps. Stay tuned. This little clearing could be good. Just need to remove some of these small saplings. There's a log there. How long is this? <laughs> that might be helpful as the basis of my fire. Slip knot, the simplest trucker's hitch, and I'll just pull it under light tension for now. Line hitch here. This is the snap bowline method I love to use. I just do a running bowline and a tie out. I already had a bowling on one end. Another taut line hitch. And I'll go around and tighten all these taut line hitches up. It's looking good. And just a cheap footprint to protect from moisture. In winter camping, moisture control is the name of the game.
This is an oak forest that I'm in, almost entirely oak. So there's no birch bark, no old man's beard or pine twigs. So I have to look for other sources of tinder. This will make decent tinder. I'll warm it up in my pocket first. Should be good for fuel. I just need some more smalls and mediums. Gathered three sticks, cut them to the same length. We're gonna make a tripod. Butterfly here, small one. Maybe I'll break it about there. So I'm just gonna do a wildland spike. That's gonna be our hanger for our pot. We'll then loop this back up into the top alpine butterfly loop and we'll be able to adjust the height. I'll tie off the other end, possibly to the tripod itself. We'll see when the time comes. The magic of toggles and the magic of the girth hitch. Anything with a loop, you can easily hang with the help of a toggle. I'm gonna use this to fix the standing end of my adjustable pot hanger. Split this and use it as a platform to start the fire. Preparation is key to ensuring you get a fire going. We have a dry bed to start our fire, small sticks to medium sticks, and our heavier fuel, as well as a bit of green wood to keep the fire going overnight for later.
Ben's. No longer Uncle Ben's, just Ben's. Rice and pulses. And I've got some summer sausage, turkey sausage, that I'm gonna mix with this. And that's my dinner. Three hundred twenty calories for just this rice and pulses. It's starting to freeze. Oh yep. Yeah. I can always melt snow, but this is probably sufficient, honestly. Got the trusty titanium spork. Tightening the taut line hitch to raise it up, just so I don't burn the bottom. Appetizing. This shelter setup is okay. It's just basically a lean-to on the first tie out with this extra flat roof. It is supposed to snow tonight, a little bit, and I've got a little bit of material back underneath where my bedding is from the tarp. And then under my tarp, I've got first just a cheap footprint for moisture protection. Then above that, I've got this emergency blanket, sort of a space blanket kind of material, sort of like mylar, probably is mylar. And then I've got two wool blankets and I'm Hoping that's going to be enough tonight, coupled with the long fire. Going to have to wake up and stoke this fire, but I think my body will just wake me up if I'm too cold and I'll stick some more fuel on the fire. Okay, I think these, uh, this rice and beans is probably, probably hot enough. Let's grab our shemag so we don't get burned. You should always carry a shemag, by the way. One of the simplest and most versatile pieces of gear you can have. Just a square piece of cotton. I think I'll heat it up a bit more. I have a separate video showing how to make this adjustable height pot hanger, but I used an alpine butterfly loop on the bottom when I should have used a marlin spike like I'm doing here. I don't know what I was thinking. Thanks to Bill, I think it was Bill. Bill, if you're watching, thanks for pointing that out. Definitely want a marlin spike at the bottom, otherwise your toggle will just fall out when you remove the pot. You do have to be cognizant of the flames growing too high. You don't want it to burn your paracord. That is the drawback of this setup. But the trade-off is it's very simple. It's only cordage and a tripod. There's no fashioning sticks or driving stakes into the ground like with some other pot hanger systems. And here I just have a tent stake holding the taut line hitch that allows me to adjust and lock the height. So I'm just gonna gradually feed these logs into the fire as they burn. It saves me a lot of energy from chopping these down into smaller pieces and it saves my blade. All right, so let's call it good. My pants are steaming. The moisture escaping my pants. I think I'll make some tea. Gonna have some Ben's rice flavor in there. Turkey sausage tea. Steeping. Keep this fire raging now. I think now I'm just trying to stay warm. 
Did I burn my boot though? No, it's fine. Give the bag a squeeze. I'm a bag squeezer. Any fellow bag squeezers out there? I like a strong tea, and I find that bag squeezing affords me a strong tea. Ah, oh, I'm just grateful to be out here. Grateful to be warm, too. This fire's throwing a lot of heat now. It's got a great bed of coals. It should be pretty easy to keep it alive all night. When it's overcast in the winter, it's actually a lot lighter, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but the light just reflects off the clouds and then off the snow, and you barely need a headlamp to get around. I just grabbed another piece of wood, just out of paranoia. Not sure if this will comfortably last me, what I have left. My boot inserts are just steaming. It's 10.15 and I'm thinking about building the fire up and trying to get some sleep. Lessons learned so far. Filling a Nalgene with hot water is really effective. I have a Nalgene within the wool blankets that I filled with water that I boiled, and it uh, does a lot for keeping you warm, and it caches the heat for such a long time and releases it slowly. It's great. The other lesson is not so positive. It's about this punky piece of wood embedded in the ground beside where my fire was. When I was shoveling, I uncovered a log that was frozen into the ground. Decided, eh, it's not a problem. It might help me build my fire. Or I could use it structurally to lean things on to get the fire started, maybe. Anyway, uh, now that the fire's been going for seven, eight, nine hours, that punky piece of wood is starting to combust. And the smoke is really noxious and disgusting. It's flowing through the log like a pipe right into my sleeping area. So I might have to get up and smash that log with, a, with my axe. I already managed to slightly destroy it, one part of it, but it's still channeling this gross smoke right into my space here. But other than that, things are good. Especially with this hot water bottle within the wool blankets. That's the ticket. It's almost 6 a.m. now. I had a decent sleep. I think I'll get up and get moving. Gotta get up, gotta get going, gotta see a friend of mine. That's Winnie the Pooh. Um, what was I, uh, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, we'll have light, we'll have first light at probably 7.20. And it is quite easy to see right now. Anyway, I think I'll get the blood flowing in my extremities. <laughs> I used all my wood, more or less.
leverage. There we go, that bowline fits perfectly. I'm grab a log, create a lever. I want to amplify the force, basically. go. It was a long night, but if nothing else, we gained some dirt time, or in this case, snow time, and it served as a humbling reminder of the resourcefulness and resilience of those who lived on this land before us with even more primitive gear. <laughs>